Hello everyone, if you are a creative photographer, you are in the right place. I'm Hayley, creative photography addict and founder of Creative Photo Folk, where I help photographers transform their photos into art so they're easy to sell. In today's episode, I'll be showing you how to create the light bulb sparkler trick. It's not a tough one to work out yourself, but I create these videos to give you the peace of mind that you're doing it the right way first go. For this project, you will need a light bulb, obviously, a pack of sparklers, matches or a lighter, a container of water, an optional reflective surface to create a reflection. This could be plexiglass, a mirror or glass from a picture frame with black paper underneath some blue tack to hold both your light bulb and sparkler in place. And a tripod. You'll also find a torch helpful to see in the dark. And I also bought this fancy USB powered blue light bulb to see if I could create anything fun. You'll need to shoot this one in a dark location. So either outdoors at night, or in a dark room with no ambient lights, like a garage with some ventilation and away from smoke alarms. If indoors, the sparkler will likely light up the room. So having a black backdrop or large black sheet of cardboard behind will help cut distractions. If shooting outdoors, there's the risk of your surface getting covered with dew. So try not to shoot in colder conditions. You'll need to attach the light bulb to your chosen surface. So if you're using blue tack like me, try to keep this out of the line of sight as much as possible. But if you can't manage that, we'll take care of it in editing later. You want to ensure the light bulb is as straight as possible. So the reflection is symmetrical. Now, I had some difficulty sticking blue tack to my glass surface. I think this is because I just sprayed it with glass cleaner. And so my shot suffered from the bulb not being straight. If you're using a reflective surface, it's best to position your bulb back far enough to be able to see some of the reflection. I used my trusty 24 70 millimeter lens for this shoot and popped my camera on a tripod at roughly the same height as the bulb. Between each sparkler burn, I varied my camera height, zoom length, and even the camera's orientation, just to have some variation. But there's honestly not enough of a difference to say which I liked best. Now, how to position your sparkler. Catching the sparkler when it's right behind the bulb is the toughest part. The first time I did this project, I put the sparkler in an empty beer bottle on a lower surface behind the globe. But I found that half the burn time was wasted waiting for the sparks to be positioned correctly. So this time I bent the sparkler, so most of the burn would take place behind the bulb. To prop this up, I wrapped it in some blue tack and stuck it to the glass surface, making sure it was positioned centrally behind the bulb. However, the heat from the sparklers did cause some damage to the glass. So if you're going to try this method, use something cheap from a charity store. To focus on the bulb, you'll need to use manual or back button focus. So the focus won't change every time you press the shutter. But you'll need to remember to reset your focus every time you vary the camera position, ideally using a torch so your camera can see what to focus on. I just use my mobile phone. With each sparkler, I also recommend experimenting with different shutter speeds. The settings I used the most were f16 and 4 seconds, or f11 and 1.6 seconds, both with an ISO of 100. You're really aiming for an aperture that gives good depth, a shutter length that allows a good amount of sparks, and an overall exposure that isn't blowing out the sparkler. When you're ready, light your sparkler and take continuous photos as it burns. When it's done, let it cool to avoid burning your fingers. Then remove the blue tack and throw the sparkler into the glass of water so it doesn't start any fires. Now, a few other things I recommend trying. Your sparkler will light up the bulb, but not the base. 
So during your exposure, use a torch to light paint the base of the bulb so it isn't just a dark black blob. Make sure to do this in at least one of your shots for every setup so that we can edit this into your favorite shots in post later on. Another thing I tried was to use a piece of black foam core to waft the sparks around to get more movement. I suspected my blue USB bulb was too bright compared to the sparks, but I really liked how the blue changed the white balance of the sparks to be more orange. So I decided to use it to light paint my bulb to get a splash of blue among the yellow, which I think looks really cool. I also thought it looked pretty good with the bulb switched off and in some cases edited in some of the blue light for a different effect. Using a similar setup, you can also try light painting with your sparklers. For a festive feel, I grabbed some champagne and wine glasses and waved my sparkler around behind with the settings 1.6, 8 seconds, and for some reason, ISO 160. Now, over in post, there's a few things I'll show you how to do. So at the moment we're in Lightroom and the only thing I really wanted to show you how to do here is that you can change the white balance if you like to make it more warmer. You could even play around with the colors if you wanted just to do something different, but I'll show you a little bit more about that later. And otherwise you can see my other settings. So I'll just reset it to show you what the before was like. So it really isn't doing a whole lot, just really giving it a bit more contrast and a bit more clarity. But of course that's down to personal taste. Now we're gonna talk about how to remove the blue tack. Now I was lucky in most of my shots that you just couldn't see it because there wasn't enough light there. But this is one example where you could, so I'll show you how to fix that. So we are in Lightroom, but I'm just going to hit photo, edit in, and then edit in Adobe Photoshop. And we'll zoom in a little to see what we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a blank layer. So this is our blank layer button, add a new layer. And I think for this, we'll tackle it with the clone stamp tool. So that is found with the shortcut S. It's this one here that looks like a little stamp. And I'll zoom in, make sure my brush or my clone stamp brush is roughly the size of the area I want to affect. And I can do that by hitting my square bracket keys on my keyboard to change the size. Now, one thing I'm going to do is it's a little difficult to see, but it is because it is quite dark. So if I add a curves adjustment layer and pull that up in the middle, it helps us see a little bit better what we're doing. And that just gives us a better indication of what to sample from when we're cloning over our problem area. So we'll go back to our blank layer and I'm going to hit Alt or Option and just sample a little area that's nearby the area we wish to paint over. And luckily it is dark, so this is going to be fairly forgiving. But if, for example, you did want to like print this or something, you would want to do a pretty good job. And so as you can see, I'm sampling quite often and then just painting over the area that is a problem. Whoops, undo that one. So I just use Control or Command Z to undo. I think that looks kind of okay. So that's taking care of the reflection. Now we'll take care of this guy. So at first I'm going to sample from this section here, which is a little bit lighter until we get sort of into this area where we will then sample from the darker color. Let's go a little bit more carefully around the edges. So probably not hugely party starting to watch this happening, but I'm just going to make my mouse a little bit smaller for this section. But it is important to know how this is done. I think that looks pretty good there. Now, if you want to get really technical, and I probably wouldn't bother for an image like this, but see, you've now got this kind of blue color reflection from where the blue tack was. So what I would do in that instance is add a hue saturation layer, and I would pull that down just to get rid of that blue. So maybe to about there. Now, making sure that layer mask of that hue saturation layer is highlighted, I'm just gonna press Control or Command I to invert it. So now we can't see that change, but I'll load my brush with white. So white over here on the swatch, make my brush smaller, and then I'm just gonna paint that hue saturation adjustment over that area. So now if we turn that curves off, it should look pretty good. 
can't really see it anyway, but I just wanted to make sure that if your image was a little brighter and you could really see it, that that's how you would take care of it. But this is a pretty bad image. I would never use it anyway. I just wanted to show you how that was done. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to add that little bit of light painting that we did during the shoot. So this is an example with the light painting and one without. So what I will do in Lightroom is make sure that both those layers are selected. So I just control or command clicked to click the second image so they're both highlighted. And then I'll go to Photo, Edit In. But this time, instead of editing Adobe Photoshop, we'll go to Open as Layers in Photoshop. So right down the bottom. So now you see them both in the same document. And because I didn't move my tripod between shots, they should line up. What I'm going to do is change the blend mode. So at the moment, I've got my light painting layer on top. If that's not the case, you can just drag them around. And I'm going to change the blend mode, which is found under the word normal, to probably screen. And this is a really good thing to show you anyway, because now you can see that I've got even more sparks in the image, which is really cool. So that's another way you can kind of, if you didn't have a lot of sparks in your image, you can just combine two shots together, change one of the blend modes to screen. So you can take extra sparks from a different image and put it into another one, for example. So it looks kind of like you've got even more sparks, makes it look more full. We won't do that right now. I'm just going to apply the little bit of light painting. So what I'll do is add a layer mask. Now, the quickest way to do this really is to invert the layer mask. So with Control or Command I, then with my brush again with white. So making sure that white is selected here in your color picker as the swatch. And you can load your brush tool with B. It's this one here, looks like a paintbrush on your toolbar. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger again with my square bracket keys on my keyboard. And then with the white, I'm just gonna paint over that area. Now, I don't wanna go the whole way because we'll see that blue tack. So I'm just gonna switch over to black using X on my keyboard and then make sure that that bit is not lit. And so that just gives a little more life now to the base here. Now what I should have done is used a more yellow light. I used a blue LED torch for this part and I probably could have used my lighter or something to make sure that this was a more of an orange. We could fix that, you know, by using a hue saturation, making it more orange, maybe there. I could then again, control command I to invert that, use my brush to with white paint over that just to get like a nice orange. So that's something you could do if you do make that same mistake. But I'll just show you one final thing, which is pretty fun. So what I first want you to do is to load your gradients panel. Now to do that, you'll wanna go to window and then make sure that gradients is selected. If it's not, then hit it. If it is, you'll need to find where it is on your screen. So mine at the moment is right here. Now, you may have already done this step, but I'm going to explain it anyway. In this little hamburger menu here, click that, and what we wanna hit is Legacy Gradients. And what that will do is add some extra gradients to your list that used to be in Photoshop, but now have been removed, but you can add them back. I don't know why Photoshop removes these things because they're usually pretty fun. And what we're looking for in our list, and you may have many or you may have few, but you're looking for the one that says Spectrums. And in here, you'll find a rainbow. Then what you're going to do is drag that into your layers panel and it's going to do something like this. Now what we're going to do is go to our blend modes, again where it says normal, hit that, and we're going to change it to something like, let's go with color. And you'll see what that does. It's now made our sparks rainbow colored, which is cool, but I don't love this result. So let's do some different things with it. We can change what it looks like. So at the moment it is circular, so we could make it linear. And we could do whatever that is. I think it's the diamond one. I think that looks pretty cool, but the reflection isn't super convincing. That one's interesting. But I think we will work again with the radial. But what I'm gonna do is double click the icon down here on the gradient fill layer. And we can start to play with things like the scale, like how big that radial gradient is. And we want it at a place where we can see quite a few different colors. So maybe about there. We can reverse that so the colors look different. That looks better. I like the yellow inside. And then we can click on the gradient and we can move these little tabs around so you can get more or less of one color. So just something a bit different. And then you could then, if you wanted, mask that away. You might want to do this on one where you don't see as much of the reflection just so it's so you're not having to worry about the colors in the base reflection being the same as the main. Here's one I shot earlier. So all things to play around with. So have some fun experimenting and see what bright ideas you can come up with.
There we go, my friends, the popular light bulb sparkler trick. If you decide to give this a try, come share your results on Creative Photo Folk's Facebook page. And if you'd like to master photography the fun way, come check out my course, Photo Fanatics. Plus, be sure to like and subscribe so we can catch up again. Happy creating.